Hi everyone, welcome back to Learn Turkish the Easy Way channel. Uh, this is our next live class on the grammar topics in Turkish language. And today's topic will be the past tense of optative mood. This is uh, the continuation of our series of videos on the conjugations of the verbs in Turkish language. So, just to remind you where we overall were, uh, let me open the, this document, the PDF file for you. Uh, just a second. So, yeah, it's open. So, uh, you probably see this one, right? You remember this. Uh, this, this picture, right? This picture is also, by the way, I pinned this document, PDF document, in our Telegram channel uh, for your reference in order for you to have this kind of uh, overall big picture to understand where we overall stand in terms of the verb conjugations. So this picture, this PDF document, uh, basically summarizes all possible uh, conjugations in Turkish language. Now, the first part that you see here, the simple past, sorry, simple tense conjugations, right? Uh, this one that I highlight over here. Uh, this first part is the one that, we, that it's the row, right? It's the simple tense conjugations. We have five tenses and four moods, and we already covered them in our previous videos, right? One by one, uh, each on a separate class uh, day. So, what we are doing in, in these videos nowadays, in these new videos, we are covering this part first. So, we, are, we, we started the conjugations of the combined tenses, right? Combined test conjugations, this one. And we already finished this, uh, sorry, this seven. Let me just highlight seven, okay? This seven. So, what, do we, what did we do here? Uh, as you remember, we had three possible... Uh, combinations, right? The, the first combination is the one where we add the auxiliary verb ed. I highlighted for you here. So this is basically the first possible. Let me also zoom in. So the first possible combination is the one we add the the, the auxiliary verb ed to to this tenses and moods, right? And here we had what we have basically six, sorry, eight uh, possible versions here. We have covered seven of these, and today we'll be covering this one. And then when we finish this one, then our next combination set will be for imish, okay? For imish, adding imish auxiliary verb to all of this, not all, but seven actually. We have only seven possible cases here, tenses and moods. Uh, and then when we finish the auxiliary verb imish, we will start conjugating isa, okay? Which has only uh, six possible uh, cases, okay, six possible combinations. So right now we are here. We are trying to add uh, this one past tense of optative mood. We are trying to add ed to this uh, optative mood above, okay? This one plus this one actually. So this one is tekkipi optative mood plus ed, which is actually this one, okay? Over here. So that's the combination that we are covering today. And uh, the more we cover, the more this picture will be completed overall. Okay, uh, you can find again. You can find this document in our uh, Telegram channel. I have pinned it there uh, for you, for reference, for you. So let's start our class then. We will start as always with the grammar structure. How we make this uh, past tense of optative mood, or how we add this ed, right? Ed. Here, this one, ed to the optative mood. So let's see the structure first. So uh, we start always as with the affirmative, right? Affirmative, uh, which means positive st sentences, right? So what do we have here? We have uh, yapa, which is stable across all persons, right? It is stable everywhere. Then we have basically it's the verb root, right? Yap is the verb root. Like here, here is the rule. So we have verb root without mac mac. Then we add optative mood ending or suffix a e. Two over here it means that it, it can be only a or e. Then we add id, and then we add the personal ending. Okay, and of course we, everything should be combined in one word. 
it is combined and uh, produced as a combined result. Uh, what does it mean? That it means that in writing, okay, in writing and uh, in spoken language, we always uh, use these results, okay, result words, not this part structure. We don't separate them in in, in spoken language. We always use this one, the the combined version. Uh, this one, this one, and so on. Okay. So I have two verbs here, as always, as an example to give you. So let's start with yap, with yapmak. So first person for yapmak, we have yap, yap, right? Then we add a here as optative mood. Then we add id, and then we have this person ending me, right? So when you combine one addition here, of course, is this fusion letter ye here. Why? Because uh, we have a and e come coming together. We even delete both of them, a and e, but only add one ye, okay? One ye in between, that's a fusion letter. So the result will be always yidun, yidun, and so on. So we have this ye everywhere here. So yeah, uh, first person i, right, ben, yapaidum, sen, second person singular, yapaidun, now we have n here, o, Yapaide, bis, yapaiduk, sis, yapaidenes, onlar, yapaidilar. Now, yapa, uh, normally the structure is yapalar idi, right? But yapaidilar is more appropriate. Uh, this uh, third person uh, plural is always a gray zone. It's a very kind of a confusing zone for many people, even Turkish people. Some people use it like uh, putting lar first and then the ending. Some people uh, add lar at the end, okay? So this is more appropriate in terms of usage, in terms of the kind of a majority of users. So yapay the lar is, the, is better rather than yapalar the, okay? So yapay the lar. That's the third person uh, plural for y verb yapmak in the, as, as the past tense. Then we have vermek to give verb. So first person singular vereydim, second person singular sen. Vereydin, o, vereydi, biz, vereydik, siz, vereydiniz, and onlar, vereydiler. Okay. For those who don't know, this lar is in parentheses because it can be omitted. Okay. If you have uh, a, a pronoun that already uh, specifies it is plural, you can omit this lar lar plural ending at the end of the verbs. Okay. As long as it's uh, it is denoted somewhere else, in, through the pronoun, or through the uh, word itself, right? For example, if you say cars, you already know it's plural. If you say people, we already know it's plural, so at the end of the verb you can omit it. You don't necessarily have to keep it, you don't necessarily have to omit it, it's just a choice of uh, preference, okay? So anything that is in parentheses, it, should, it, it, it can be omitted. So this is affirmative, okay? How we make for, uh, and how we make the positive, positive sentence, affirmative sentence, uh, as the past tense of optative mood. Okay. Let's now go and look for the negative. For negative, it is always we have this, what? We have root, right? Verb root, without mak mek. Then we have the negation structure, negation suffix ma or me. That's why it's ma or two. Then we have a, optative mood ending a, e. Again, a over 2, right? It can be A over E. Then we have ED and personal ending added. Now, one thing is kind of a... One additional thing here is what? Look at this uh, ye here again. We have another mutation, sorry, a fusion letter ye here. So basically, when we combine everything here, right, we have two, uh, two fusion letters here, two fusion letters ye here. One after the ma, and one after the, all the together with the idim, okay, idim. Why? Because you see, when you add this here, when you add, oh, let me see, show it here. Look at this rule. When you add this ma, and then comes a, right? There are two vowels coming together. Therefore, one fusion letter ye is required here, and then we also have this, right, this part, which is added by default as a fusion letter there. So we have two fusion letter ye here, one here one here, right, here, and one here, after this. So, basically, uh, for first person singular, then it becomes what? I'll, I'll just read the results for you, okay? Yap my item. 
Ben yapmayaydım. Sen yapmayaydın. O yapmayaydı. Biz yapmayaydık. Siz yapmayaydınız. And onlar yapmayaydılar. Okay? Yapmayaydılar. Uh, for the for vermek for vermek it will be what vermeyeydim ve sonra vermeyeydim uh, vermeyeydin vermeyeydi right biz vermeyeydik siz vermeyeydiniz and onlar vermeyeydiler uh, so I'm just uh, by the way uh, of course, in written language, we don't have this negation suffix in capital. I just put it separate for you to distinguish it, okay? So that you see where the negations uh, ma or ma stands. So normally, it's not written in capital, just for uh, a side note for you. So this is basically negative, how we make negative uh, for the past tense of the optative mood. Okay. Now let's look at the interrogative. In interrogative, we have this again, yapa, yapa, everywhere, stable, right? Then we have the question words, mu, mi, and always pay attention to this note. Uh, question words, mu, mi, mu, mu, dinus, mu, yum, and so on, in Turkish language, are all, all, always written separately from the verbs. Therefore, we add, add this ed, right? Then we combine this ed with mi, not the verb root, but the, the question word mu, okay? Mu, mi, here. So what is the rule here? Verb root, then we have a, a optative mood ending, and then separately we have question word mu mi. Why mu mi? I know there is no mu mu because a, a necessitates only mu mi. Okay, there is no possible kind of a mu mu. We have only mu or mi because of this a or a that precedes that question word, and then lastly we add this ed together with the personal ending to this question word mi mi, okay? So that's how we combine them, and the result should be here, okay? Result should be like this. Verb root, separate the question word, ed, and personal ending. So let's re let's pronounce all of this. Merhaba, Vija. Welcome. Ya uh, So let's make pronounce all of this, okay? Ben yapamaydım. Sen yapamaydın. O Yapamaydı. Biz yapamaydık. Siz yapamaydınız. Onlar yapamaydılar. Okay. Yapamaydılar becomes yapamaydılar. Why ler becomes lar? Because of the vowel harmony here. Because this mı requires to to harden, right? Make it hard. It becomes yidi. Not yidi, not yidi, but yidi. So that's why uh, this ler also is transformed into lar. Yapamaydılar. For vermek, it is soft anywhere, so ler here ends up in ler anyway. So vermek ben veremeydim. Sen veremeydin. O veremeydi. Biz veremeydik. Siz veremeydiniz. And onlar veremeydiler. Okay. So that's interrogative. And the last one is negative interrogative, where we just do the same in the negative plus the question word combined with idim, right? So yapmaya, he, again we have fusion letter here everywhere, right? One fusion letter for yapmaya, and second fusion letter here as ye for idim, combine, combining uh, question word with idi, right? So how will it pronounce? Yapmaya mıydım? Sen yapmaya mıydın? O Yapmaya mıydı? Biz yapmaya mıydık? Siz yapmaya mıydınız? And onlar yapmaya mıydılar? For vermek, the result will be Vermeye miydim? Sen vermeye miydin? O vermeye miydi? Uh, biz vermeye miydik? Siz vermeye miydiniz? And onlar vermeye miydiler? So this is basically the structure, okay? So we have four possible affirmative, negative, uh, interrogative, and negative interrogative for all possible conjugations. And that's how we conjugate based on the different persons, okay? So basically it means what? It means uh, the 
it means the optative mood or the desire wanting something in the in the past okay that's why we add this ed to this mood now let me tell you one thing uh, before we continue this optative mood in the past tense now normally where where is optative it's here right the the, the row simple conjugations here optative mood is separate from the conditional mood right which is the second one here so conditional mood is different than the optative mood but look at the the title here look at the title of uh, of the conditional mood here in turkish language conditional mood is called dilek shart kepi not only shart shart is condition yes but dilek also means a desire or wish okay a wish basically speaking a wish or desire so dilek shart kepi which we call conditional mood has two purposes it has Con the, to specify if condition and also to specify the desire. Istek kipi is also a desire, that's why it's called istek, right? It, it comes from the word verb istemek. Istemek is to want, and istek means a want. It's a noun of the verb to want, okay? So istek kipi means actually uh, the mood of wanting, the mood of desire. Now, when you, when you use this in the row formats without any kind of uh, combinations, okay? In the simple tense conjugations, they have a bit really kind of a different uses in in daily language. For example, if you say, uh, uh, for example, if you use the dilek shart kepi conditional mood and say sen ne gel sen, right? Sa se, sen ne gel sen, uh, it means basically, uh, or Ben de gelsem, right? Let's use first person singular, okay? Ben de gelsem. Ben de gelsem means uh, shall I shall I come to, okay? Or I I probably I, I want to come to, okay? I want to come to. Uh, or shall I come, okay? Because shall I come is not it's still kind of an a kind of an offer, right? But if you say uh, in istek is in the optative mood ben de Ben geleim, because ben gelsem is different than ben geleim, right? Because conditional mood is ben gelsem. Uh, optative mood is ben geleim. Ben geleim is, has a stronger kind of meaning, okay? It means what? Let me also come, okay? I want to come. I want to come, let me come, okay? Ben geleim, ben de geleim. It means I want to come, so let me come. Ben de gelsem has a, uh, a question part. A question in the sense that Maybe I shall come to, what do you think, right? Ben de mi gelsem, or ben de gelsem, uh, shall I come to? So when, when we use this in their language, this two, the row format, okay, not combined, row, they have a bit comparable separate meanings. But when it comes to combined meanings, combined, when we add ed, okay, ed, to the optative mood and the conditional mood, this two, okay, these two, let me highlight them these two they have almost the same meaning okay they have almost the same meaning which means both of them we mean mean what uh, I want that I kind of uh, had done something okay Ben for example when you say Ben de geleidim it means I wish I had come to okay I should have come to I want I wanted to come or I don't know how even to express it properly but it basically means that I uh, I should have come to okay so my desire is that I have I had to come to I should have come to so in essence this last one that we covered the past tense of the optative mood is actually redundant it's the redundant version of what of the past tense of the conditional mood this one okay so past tense of optative mood is very much a redundancy for this past tense of conditional mood which means what which means in practice in practice uh, let me write it in a rock work pad our work pad which means in practice right it means that let me just write it here in practice geleidim is almost is almost the same as gelseidim okay Okay, so this one is geleidim is what the past tense of optative mood for the first person singular and gelseidim is the past tense of the conditional mood for the first person singular right but they have the same meaning 
okay calidem or calcidem you see if you delete this one s it becomes same so calcidem or calidem they are in usage in in daily practice they are same okay for, for example you can say for second person singular galsaiden right galaiden right galaiden is same as galsaiden it means i want that I, I actually wish that you had also come okay i wish i i desire that you also had come so okay don't forget this note again uh, when they are used separately, okay, when this optative mood and in conditional mood are used in their language in the raw format without any ed or image added at the end, without any past tense, they have comparative with different meanings. But when it comes to here, okay, these two, they have very, very close and interchangeable meanings, okay. So, and by the way, let me tell you also that this one that we covered today is almost not used at all. Okay, almost not used. Very, very rare. Very rare. At least, let's say 20-30%. So if you want to convey the same, the same meaning, people prefer to use the conditional mode. Okay, past tense of the conditional mode. This one. Gelseidin, gelseidin, gelseidik and so on. Rather than geleidin, geleidin, geleidik and so on. Okay, so people prefer to use gelseidin. This one, the past tense of the conditional mode. Just a side note, okay? it was a very long note, side note, but still I, I had to tell you this because uh, not to confuse you very much and not to confuse you in terms of meanings, these two, right, again, okay, these two have come, uh, very interchangeable meanings. Okay. So, uh, so we are done with this one, right? we are done with this optative mood, passage of the optative mood. In the next class, we will start, or next grammar class, we'll start with adding image. Image to the what? To the seven possible conditions. So we have nine tenses, sorry, five tenses and four moods right here. But we add image only to seven of them, not all of them. Okay? So here, these are the, poss the possible seven poss kind of uh, conditions where we can add image, right? Image 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 here here and so on so from the next classes we will grammar classes we will continue with this one starting with the uh, reported past tense of the present tense yaparmış okay gidermiş görürmüş severmiş and so on and so on for today's practice let me just finish with the practice okay and a couple of examples for today's lessons so let's let's just use this uh, uh, or the change construct kind of based on the first person singular, okay, and change according to the format affirmative, negative, interrogative, and so on, okay. So let me just make it here. So the first is affirmative to sit, right? Oturmak means to sit or reside. So oturmak it will be what? Oturaydım in this case at first person singular, right? Okumak will be okuyaydım. And by the way, pay attention to the fact that whenever the verb ends in what? Verb ver ends in vowel. We also add extra ye here, okay? We add extra, extra fusion letter ye here between the verb root and the optative mood ending ae, okay? So that is another fusion letter, possible fusion letter. So at the end, you, at the end therefore, we have what? We have two fusion letters here. One is this one, right? And the second one is this one. Okuyaydım, okay? That's a kind of a, a peculiar to, to the verbs. The root of which ends in a vowel. Okay. In other cases, you see, so okumak becomes okuyaydım, sevmek it ends in a consonant, this one ends in consonant, this one ends in consonant, and oturmak also ends in consonant. In all others, we don't need this fusion letter, okay? So for sevmek, it will be seveydim, right? I wish I had also loved, which also is same with sevseydim, okay? Görmek, göreydim, and vermek, vereydim. Okay, very them. Let's now look at the negative. Okay, negative one. Uh, we have negative negation suffix ma or me, right? In this one, two, we have ma, and this three we have me. Okay. So for watermark it will be oturmayaydım. For okumak, which is to read or to study, will be okumayaydım. So you see we have two fusion letters right everywhere here one this one one this one 
two fusion letters, yeah. For save make, it will be save me item or save me item, which is the same thing as a conditional mood, okay? Gör make becomes gör me item or interchangeably gör me item, it doesn't matter. And ver make would mean will be uh, ver me item, okay? Negative uh, for first person singular for these verbs. What about interrogative? Let me just have this one separate, okay? Interrogative, first person singular. Oturmak will be oturamaydım, okay? So oturamaydım, we have the root at adding a, a, and again here we have another, another yeah, right? Because this ends in vowel here, it ends in vowel, right? We need ye in between for these two letters. So okumak becomes okuyamaydım, sevmek becomes sevemaydım, Görmek becomes göremedim and vermek becomes veremedim. Okay. And the last one is what? Negative interrogative, first person singular. Oturmak becomes oturmaya mıydım? Okay. Oturmaya mıydım? Or oturmasa mıydım? If you want to make it conditional, it will be oturmasa mıydım, right? Of course. Uh, then we have okumak, okumaya mıydım? Okay. Okumaya mıydım? Okumaya, sorry, okumaya mıydım? Sevmek becomes sevmeye miydim? Görmek becomes görmeye miydim? Vermek becomes vermeye miydim? Okay. So this is basically how we make negative interrogative for first person singular for these verbs. This is the past tense of optative mood, just to repeat. And I have, I have just four examples here. Let's look at examples. Sen de geleydin means actually sen de gelseydin, it's the same thing. You can say sen de gelseydin, the, of the past tense of the conditional mood, which is same with the past tense of the optative mood, in terms of meaning. Sen de geleydin or sen de gelseydin, you should have come to. Or I wish you should have come to, okay? That's basically what it means. So you should have come is sen geleydin. Gelmeyeydin o zaman. Now it's negative, right? It's an example of negative for the same verb, gelmek. And this one is, let me just make it, this one is a neg negation, right? Gelmeyeydin o zaman. Means, then you should have not come, or you should not, you shouldn't have come, okay? Gelmeyeydin is the same with what? Gelmeseydin, in terms of meaning, again, just to repeat. Gelmeseydin or gelmeyeydin, it's the same thing, okay? Gelmeyeydin o zaman, o zaman means then, uh, and gelmeyeydin, you shouldn't have come. Or I wish you shouldn't have come then. Okay? You better have not come. You, you better had not come then. The third example, partiye gitmeye, gitmeye miydim acaba? Parti here is the party, and ye here, right, together with the fusion letter is what? Dative case. It's dative case ending a -e, together with the fusion letter ye, which means to, right? Uh, dative case by default means what? To or towards, right? So partie, here it means to. Partie, gitmeye miydim, or which means gitmese miydim acaba? Gitmeye miydim, gitmese miydim, shouldn't I have gone to the party, I wonder, right? I wonder if actually I should not have gone to the party. But the meaning is, is about what? It's, it's about the, the desire, again, wish. Uh, you probably you, you feel that that you probably uh, desire or want the condition that you had not gone to the party. Okay, that's basically what it means. Party gitmeyemidim acaba? Gitme gitmeyemidim. And the last example here is what? Evde kalamaydık. Which means ev here is house. Da da ending is the, the locative case right of the nouns. Locative case da da which means at in on and so on. Evde at home. Kalamaydık, the this first person plural, right? We. Uh, sorry, let me just change it. It's it's not I. We. It's we. Okay. Should we have stayed at home? If the kalamaydık, or or what? You can also say what kalsamaydık. If the kalsamaydık, or if the kalamaydık. Again, past tense of the conditional mood, or past tense of the optative mood. They have the same same meaning. If the kalamaydık, if the kalsamaydık. Should we have stayed at home actually? Okay, or I desire that maybe we should have stayed at home. Okay, 
that's interrogative okay so this one was negative interrogative right this one was negative interrogative and this is just uh, interrogative okay so four simple examples I don't want to provide more examples of this because it is very uh, much interchangeably used with the uh, previous passes of the conditional mood okay so I think that this should be enough for the two interests of meaning but uh, yeah if you want these examples basically they are here uh, so that's basically it for today's lessons I think I covered everything I wanted to cover uh, if you like this video please kindly just put that button uh, thumbs up button push that thumbs up button uh, if you really like it it really helps I appreciate your participation watching this video and I hope you to see you in the following classes our next class grammar class at least okay when, whenever we cover grammar next time we will cover this one we, we will start adding image okay this one we will start adding image auxiliary verb to uh, four tenses and three moods okay here okay one by one every single lesson will cover separately each of this okay we will start again with the uh, reported past tense of present tense which means adding image to the word uh, to the verb sorry verbs in the present tense right yaparmış gidermiş verirmiş görürmüş duyarmış and so on so that's how what we will cover next time whenever we cover the grammar class so thank you for joining have a nice week ahead bye bye everyone